Right, welcome back to session three of our Papa John's Center uh, for Entrepreneurship Improv Pitch Competition. So the topic of the day, the students were awarded, awarded, were given a topic yesterday and they had 24 hours to come up with a pitch. The topic for this hour is um, develop an innovative smart home product. So today, our, our hour is sponsored by the College of Human Sciences and we have with us Linda Nee, who is a faculty member in College of Human Sciences is going to talk to you a little bit first about all the wonderful entrepreneurship activities that go on in that college, opportunities for students, um, and then we will go on to the pitch competition. So Linda, thank you for being here today. Okay, thank you, Judy. Um, probably some of you may be wondering um, just exactly what human sciences entails. So I thought I'd start out just a little bit um, with uh, saying that uh, the College of Human Sciences addresses um, uh, needs of, of individuals, families, and consumers, whether it be uh, consumer uh, products to make their life better, um, new processes, um, teaching techniques, uh, new ways and better ways of doing things. So, um, you know, our, our overarching goal is to improve life quality for individuals um, and families and consumers. So you can imagine that in terms of entrepreneurship, there will be lots of opportunities to create and deliver those types of, those types of offerings. Um, you know, in, in terms of business entrepreneurship, we have uh, new product development. Some of you may have been able to take off in our fashion show over the weekend. So that is a really excellent example of uh, product development uh, in action. Um, new processes, techniques, new business models and formats. I mean, all of those types of things are really great opportunities for our majors in the College of Human Sciences, as well as civic and social entrepreneurship for, um, for areas that might uh, be more um, uh, people focused versus product focused. So the partners that we have within the College of Human Sciences, for example, kinesiology, um, apparel, events, and hospitality management, which is my home department. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about what I do there in just a moment. Um, all of uh, the awesome areas certainly have lots of business opportunities associated with them. Um, food science and human nutrition, human development and family studies and the School of Education. So you can see that we really cover a wide range of areas that touch and affect uh, uh, individuals' lives and their life quality. Um, so I teach within the College of Human Sciences, the Entrepreneurship in Human Sciences course, Awesome 474. And this course is offered every semester with about 100 students each time that it's taught. And uh, we just really uh, look at entrepreneurship as an underlying skill, uh, skill set that our students should have when they graduate from the College of Human Sciences. Um, within that class, students develop a business plan or they participate in a consulting project. So um, we will be sharing those, as a matter of fact, this Friday at the College of Human Sciences Entrepreneurship Showcase. We annually have that showcase where the students pitch to external judges um, uh, their, their new business idea. And again, it could be a new product. It could be a new uh, business overall format. We also have some social and civic um, entrepreneurship uh, projects that they'll also be pitching. So that's this Friday, um, April the 23rd. Um, so many of our students are also engaged in the entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurship minor um, at Iowa State. And I think our college year in and year out lies for the number one or two spot of, among the colleges showing a lot of interest in entrepreneurship by our students. So um, we are very involved in the entrepreneurial studies minor. I also wanted to, besides um, the class and the minor, highlight other opportunities. Um, I had mentioned the consulting projects that our students do. So every semester, and we're really excited to re reenact those this coming fall. We have a little, little break because of COVID, but um, we'll be going to Pocahontas, Iowa to do um, consulting projects this coming fall. Uh, we collaborate with Extension, um, uh, I2 Extension and Outreach, uh, Chambers of Commerce, Main Street, Iowa, any of the economic and um, business development entities that uh, are uh, here to serve Iowa communities. So we really focus on helping um, local entrepreneurs to thrive 
uh, and, and grow in these smaller Iowa communities, which is kind of a, a unique niche of ours. So we're very excited to um, get back to business on that. And we have been in over 50 Iowa small communities to date. So we've been doing this for a while and um, really have had quite a bit of success with that. And uh, that would fall under the civic entrepreneurship opportunity uh, area for our students. And then I'm here today in the um, Student Innovation Center, this beautiful new facility. And three of the opportunities that are College of Human Sciences related um, are the Innovate 1858 retail store, uh, the Culinary Creations Lab, and Sparks Cafe. So just to briefly highlight those and why we have those opportunities, um, we're very big on experiential learning in the College of Human Sciences and uh, feel that the students really, um, they need foundational content, sure they get that in the classroom, they really learn it when they're able to engage in it. So in Innovate 1858, the retail store that's on the first floor of the Innovation Center, um, we have several ways students can be involved in entrepreneurship. And one is that they are part of the, the management team. So they're learning, what's it really like to be a small business owner? In fact, this was a startup business and we started it in the middle of the pandemic. So that was a real learning experience. Um, it's very unique for our students. So um, they've overcome a lot of challenges and we're really you know, thriving and growing um, each month. Things have gotten better and better. I won't say that we're you know, where we want to be yet, but we are certainly well on our way. So the students have learned it a lot in this first year of operation. Um, within Innovate 1858, it's not just any old product that we have there. A majority of our products are student-made uh, products, meaning that the students either design and or made them. So we have student entrepreneurs that really want to bring their products to market for the very first time. So we help them to do that. Um, and then for the balance of our, our offerings, we really feature alumni and other Iowa entrepreneurs um, so that we, we really are kind of giving back to the community and and having mentoring from, uh, from alumni and that sort of thing engaged in the process as well. So those are two ways that we have entrepreneurship in Innovate 1858. As we look at the Culinary Creations Lab, um, that's all about food product development, um, uh, you know, entrepreneurial skills that can lead to uh, career paths in um, the culinary arts, in uh, hospitality, et cetera. So um, we just really have a number of, of activities going on in there. You may be able this week to catch some of the video of chef demos that we, we did, especially for Innovation Week. So that's exciting too. And then finally, on the very top floor of the Innovation Center is Sparks Cafe. And um, much like we have retail opportunities uh, for our uh, apparel merchandising and design students in the retail store, we have opportunities for our hospitality students uh, and event students also in Sparks Cafe. So it, well, that is completely student run. Yes, we have um, faculty and, and staff that guide and oversee all of these entities that I just mentioned to you, but we really try to get the students engaged in the leadership and management of all of those, those different uh, entities. So they're really learning how to be entrepreneurs or practicing entrepreneurship in each of those, each of those settings. And that really is unique. Um, there aren't too many universities that have anything like this at all. So um, we're just really excited to, to grow uh, future entrepreneurs with these types of opportunities in the College of Human Sciences. Awesome. Well, you get to, Jen, Bennett, there's a lot going on in the College of Human Sciences in terms of entrepreneurship innovation. And I'm sitting here sipping a cup of chai tea from Sparks, <laughs> uh, which is great being in the building today. So we're going to bring in our first uh, presenter. I can't remember the name, but I'll introduce that person in a minute. And uh, Kendra will time the person, and Linda, you get to listen and make your decision on the spot. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> First up is Aaron. Aaron, you'll have two minutes at the uh, timer to give your pitch. Three minutes to QA. This is Linda Mead. She's our judge for the day. Yeah. Step on the cord, and you come right over here. You are welcome to take the mask off while you're speaking. And the topic is smart home products, right? Yeah. All right, perfect. So you can pretty much start when you're ready. Hi, my name is Aaron Stern. Yesterday I was trying to do some homework 
And I took a break after being a stem for a while. And I took a drink of water. But it was this point when my drink was too warm for my liking. So I dumped it out. Not only is it unsatisfying to drink a drink that's too warm or too cold for liking, but, but so much liquid goes to waste because of it. We can find a solution to that issue with my product, the thermo rod. Uh, it's a small cylindrical rod that's put into a drink, um, stored in a bottle, can, cup, mug, uh, that has the capabilities to regulate temperature through um, through your Google Home or Alexa or your smart home, smartphone device. Small enough to fit in almost any drink holder. It allows you to make the drink the temperature you want uh, in just minutes. You want a coffee at a warm 107 degrees, you got it. You got a, you want water that's ice cold at 43 degrees, easy. It has a battery that's recharged in, uh, by drying and unplugging the, uh, plugging into a USB-C outlet. It's a good alternative to ice that does not water down drinks and um, is marketed to people that don't own an ice maker like myself. I live in a dorm with a small freezer and I don't like to go through the hassle of making ice in an um, ice tray. This is also a good alternative to the Hydroflask or Ember Mug as they pertain to some uh, solutions posed by the Thermorod, but don't have the same smart technologies as this does, as well as the abilities to use any cup or mug you want. Not only will, will our customers uh, be able to use this at home, but it's very easily and readily, uh, readily portable. When you need a drink at a specific temp uh, in the house or on the go, you're able to use a Thermorod. Um, we can rev revolutionize the drinking market and reduce waste of un unsatisfying drinks. So let's take a, a refreshing step in the right direction with the thermal rod. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Um, so uh, I, I think you've identified a problem that a lot of people have and uh, multiple problems, as a matter of fact. So it's, it's the temperature thing, but then also um not having space right not having you know when it to mess with ice and all that sort of thing so so this makes your life better in, in those particular ways so I, I like that it was rechargeable um too so your whole focus on solving uh people's problems why would they want it i think you've you've identified that what would this sell for and how how would this uh how are you thinking this would go into production yeah i think that um very heavily dependent on the research and development part of that. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a new industry that um, we're okay. seeing with the um, thermo um, technologies with like hand warmers and stuff that are right. safe to yeah, use. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't want to like pull a number out of my um, out of the back of my mind, but um, it'll probably my aim is to go under $100 for the product. Okay. All right. Right. So um, let's see here. So it can interface then with Alexa, Google. I mean, you you would would tell it like what kind of is that yeah, what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. And I know this is just a short pitch, so you probably haven't done all that research and development. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> but but um, it really amazes me what all you can say uh, ask Google to do here, yeah, right? In terms exactly. of control. So I guess that it, it, it's feasible in the realm of reality that you could do this as well. Um, let's see here. So hot or cold? I mean, is there, yeah. a, is there a, a limit here? How about safety? Did you yeah, think about so that, that too? Um, is also kind of uh, dependent on research and development. And uh -huh. it may be found that we have to have a product for hot and a product for cold. Okay. And that will have to shift our market mm -hmm. um, for each product, but it will also diversify um, that as well. For people who want one or the other. All right. So, give me your to to conclude, kind of your best selling pitch. Um, so, why would I want this anyway? Yeah, I think <laughs> it's. I so many times I get uh, stuck with a drink that's not cold enough or not warm enough, or a coffee that sat and on my desk for an hour and after, before I can get to it. And this is the solution that will keep it at the right temperature without with maintaining the freshness of the drink itself. Um, and it's you can use your favorite mugs still, and you can use your favorite drink, uh, drink holder options. It's feasible and transportable among all those other things that 
are the uses for it. Okay. All right. I think that's about three minutes, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you guys. Did you see her size? Oh, yeah. So, yes. She's pitching something different. But okay, yeah. She's got a theater. Yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought you had a long way to turn her. Oh, so you're going to actually turn her. It was about right. Well, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so, next up is Bryn and um, Kendra's going to do two minutes on the timer. Two okay. minutes of QA. This is Dr. Romani. She's on the Okay, so there you go. I guess you knew that from the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Throughout COVID, Americans have been purchasing or adopting pets. It has been very common, and we have all gotten to love our companions, and they've gotten very attached to us as we've been working from home. Now, as the vaccine is rolling out and we're all going back to our daily lives, going back to work, meetings, going out maybe for drinks afterward, pets are experiencing separation anxiety. Specifically, we're talking about dogs. They can have very destructive behavior when they experience separation anxiety. Introducing Pet Keeper, the home, uh, the smart home system that will be your eyes and ears while you're away. So it would work where you would record your own commands using your own voice, such as sit, go lay down, no, your dog's name, so that it's still the commands that you've been using. Because we do know that everyone, you know, they have their own variations of speaking to their pet. So while you're away, the system will pick up the sound vibrations of maybe chewing on your TV stand, and it will automatically say, go lay down. You know, or maybe pick up excessive barking and it'll say quiet. So this, this system will help us end separation anxiety. Thank you. Okay. So you're right. We all do have unique variations <laughs> of speaking to our pet. I will not reveal mine right now. <laughs> I won't ask. I won't ask. <laughs> and I need your pet. So yeah. So okay. I, I think you really have identified a problem, you know, I mean, there are all sorts of things kind of bubbling to the surface since, um, or sort of hopefully now swinging the other direction from COVID. Mm -hmm. So um, I would be interested to know how you, who, who you see your competitors being for this and how are you unique from some of these other home pet, you know, kind of like baby monitors, but you know, yeah. for, for pets that we've seen in the past, how is this distinctively different? Sure. So of course there's like Arlo and I actually have a camera of my own, mm -hmm. but the problem is you have to be watching. So like if I'm at work in a meeting, I can't be like sitting on my phone, watching my dog, waiting for her to do something wrong and then speak to it. So of course there's like a button you can speak to the dog. There's some, I know that you can like throw them a treat. But again, you have to be watching, you have to be actively interacting with them. So this system then would be constantly scanning. So it's still your voice, your pet feels like you're paying attention to them, but you don't have to be actively taking time away from your work day or out with friends or, you know, whatever to be watching. Okay, so you have like pre-recorded your, your voice, your commands into the system. And that, yes. So, yeah, so um, I'm sure we take more research and development. I mean, how, how do you know, like, okay, that vibration that could be chewing the TV stand, or it could be, oh, I'm, I decided to dig this, a hole in the carpet, or you yeah. know, whatever the case yeah. might be. Yeah. So, so it would be that refined. Yeah, it definitely would take a lot of research and technology. Mm -hmm. You know, I think like a, a camera scanning to pick that up, maybe. Or I know there are some some like sound wave, you know, certain pitches that maybe you could identify. Mm -hmm. So how would this uh, how would this appear? How would this be packaged and call a smart home system? Is it you know a camera like device? Maybe I missed that in the pitch. Or yeah, I think definitely a camera like device, and then with those extra features, and maybe the features cost more, like a. a if you know that your dog is an excessive barker, then maybe you get that add-on feature of the pick up the sound waves. 
um, okay. something like that. So then obviously there'd be separate packages where the pricing is different. So if your dog has maybe you know a lesser case of separation anxiety, you get the most basic package. Okay. And then if it's a more severe case, okay. you get those add-ons. Okay. All right. So you kind of a good better best. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. How much time do we have left? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna talk quick. <laughs> okay. Um, so will this work, do you think, with any type of pet? I mean, I, I know you've talked most about dogs, so yeah, I feel like most my common, experience but... is most with dogs because I have a dog of my own, so uh -huh. I know that you know, like I would do anything for a dog. Uh -huh. Um, I think definitely, you know, if with cats, I think uh -huh. it would definitely work. Um, mm -hmm. I think those are the two that I would say the primary the best for it. Uh huh. Yeah, all right. Um, pricing. The last thing, are you having like a, a ballpark price? I know that a lot of like the cameras that I have right now, they're you know they're only like fifty to one hundred or right. fifty, so it definitely be on. It would be a higher end situation. Mm. Um, so it'd be a full house kind of similar to like a security system. Okay. So it would be uh, on the pricier end of things. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good Thank job, Bryce. Thank you. Our last one is Maddie. Okay, just checking GX. So Karen Stern and Bryn Sweary, S W E R E, and we have Maddie Fugate, F U G A T E, and I think this is kind of our a smart home device solution, yes. right, Maddie? So this is Dr. Linda Neem. She's our judge for the day, representing the College of Human Sciences. Kendra will run a timer for you. Two minutes of time to talk and then three minutes of Q&A. Sounds yes. good. Yes. All right, start when you're ready. Thank you. COVID-19 changed everyone's life. Now, one thing I noticed when the pandemic hit at our house was how many packages started showing up. Not just more Amazon packages, because we had to find new ways to shop, but also grocery deliveries. Who even knew that groceries could be delivered now? Now, living in Champaign, our Instacart service delivered our groceries right to our little house. But the question that's almost seemed, sim, almost seemed like it was a seminal, synonym with the pandemic for me was my mom asking, now who's going to be home to get the groceries? And I never wanted to be the one that was home to get the groceries. I always wanted to be working with my animals, and my dad was working as well as my mom. So somebody had to be there to get our groceries so our mouth didn't sweat. So I started thinking, well, can't we like put a cooler or something out front? So that way they could put our groceries in it and our perishable items wouldn't perish. And that's when the light bulb went off in my head, introducing Smart Box. Not only is it a climate controlled box that you can have your packages delivered to and put in, but it also offers a walking feature to ensure that. Your packages that are delivered are safe and sound. I always know around the holidays, people say, if you want to get rid of something, put it in an Amazon box and put it on your front porch. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't live in a suburban area, but as I am getting closer to graduating, this is something that concerns me. So by offering a pin code enabled walking box that is climate controlled to handle deliveries, such as Grubhub to keep it warm or mm -hmm. milk so it doesn't spoil during the summer, not only will your deliveries be safe and sound, but also secure and will be enabled with capable with all of your favorite apps, such as Ring Doorbell, Amazon, Instacart, so that way you know that your deliveries have been delivered and are safe and sound right on your doorstep, waiting for you when you get home. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, Maddie. Um, so yeah, you're right. It's just like um, the amount of deliveries and what we get delivered has just like amplified, you know. So I think you totally have identified um, a a growing need. It that's the big question: how much is that going to change, you know, after post COVID? I think we'll, we'll see some return to stores, but certainly there are things that we now are ordering that we never did before, and groceries are <laughs> certainly one of them. So. I liked how you tapped into both rural and urban markets, right? So in terms of your customer base, you identified some needs that both might have. Um, 
you know, the climate control and locking feature, and that all, all sounds, sounds really great. Um, for not just groceries, but like uh, delivered meals, you mm -hmm. know, and all of that type of thing. So, so, you know, talk to me a little bit about what you mean by the climate controlled and, you know, what if I have a pizza or a, I don't know, a chicken dinner versus, oh, I had ice cream. Yes. You know, how, how's that, is, you probably haven't done deep research. Well, I've actually thought about this quite often because okay. you know, we, do, we get groceries delivered to our house, but yeah. we also have meals such as our mom puts delivery pizza, we'll come and get it. And sometimes we're out working in the barn uh -huh. and we can't always be right there to get the pizza or whatever comes up. Uh -huh. My idea is to, I would, I would when I start having it as a plug-in, we have a plug-in right by our front door. So okay. that's what makes me think of having it plugged in. But eventually I would like to try and move to solar power just so that way uh -huh. you don't have to have right. a power source right there. Uh -huh. But it will be in, controlled through your app. So you'll be able to either cool it or heat it. Now within the first model, eventually after seeing a need and if it does take off, offering maybe a dual compartment zone where you can have a heating and a cooling component. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't always have to be plugged in or heated and cooled. It can just be room temperature. Say you're getting a pretty pricey Amazon delivery. You want to make for sure that it's so safe it and sound. Too. Yes, okay. it can be for non-food. Okay. You mm -hmm. can just use it as a locking box mm -hmm. for your deliveries to come to, or you just turn to your app, you turn it on, set it at whatever temperature you would like, and it'll be climate controlled from there since it does have insulation. Um, so you would have your own Smartbox app, right? Yes. That's what you're saying. And then it would also interface with your other favorite apps. Yes, it would be compatible. I would hope to also have it compatible with Amazon. I know that I get pictures of my packages showing up on my front door, which at first I thought was a little bit weird because I was getting pictures of my own front door. Mm -hmm. But I figured out after a time period when one of my packages was actually lost, how helpful those images are. Mm -hmm. So by having essentially a motion sensing function, mm -hmm. you will know that your package has been delivered into your smart box and then that will lock after that package has been delivered. And you can say how many times you would like that box to be able to unlock without having to put your pin in it. Say you're going to have one package delivered. You can set it to that box can only be opened once mm -hmm. without the pin being required, which you would have to open it then. Mm -hmm. But maybe you're going to get two deliveries, so you set that at two. And then it's open twice by both delivery guys, and then you'll have to go and put your pin in. You can either do that from the app or you could do that on the pin pad that would be on the box to then get your deliveries out and that way they are safe. Mm -hmm. um, did you have kind of a price point and, and are there competitors that are all close to this? Those are my last two questions. Yes. So price point, uh, initially I'm thinking right around $350 to $400 just because it is that kind of control function with quite a bit of insulation. And that would be for approximately a 29 quart box, mm -hmm. which would be about yay big. Um, and then if it does seem to go extremely well, I would love to try and get another size box. And like I said, with that dual component that could have a heating and a cooling function in it. And that would probably be about double the price, looking at about $800 since it would be roughly double the size. Mm -hmm. And then as far as, um, right, what was the next The competitors. So competitors, the yes. Close to that on the market now. And not that I know of. I do know that there are some boxes such as that you can plug into like your car mm -hmm. that will allow things to be heated, but they're more lunchbox type thing. Mm -hmm. Or then you have your basic coolers, mm -hmm. such as Igloo, Yeti, right. that would be competitors, but they don't have blocking function. Mm -hmm. So there's not really one that combines both currently, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't shock me that if in the future there is. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's all I see. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, you too. When you are ready, you get to come back up to mic and announce who you, and then if we could just for the camera, um, why you chose that person. And so, do you need a couple minutes? You can take it. Good luck. <laughs>
selected Mandy Puget. I'm uh, hoping I'm pronouncing Maddie's last name correctly. <laughs> Dr. Maddie's name. Um, so uh, she pitched, uh, as, as you likely are aware, a home food delivery system um, called it, um, Smartbox. And I felt that she really tapped into the growing online marketplace. It's only poised for more growth. Um, her pitch was very convincing, um, energetic, made me want to go buy it, <laughs> sold, sold me on the idea. No notes, well thought out, but you know, she really has tapped into solving a, a customer problem in terms of home food delivery, full groceries, as well as other you know, purchased, um, purchased food, meals, et cetera. And um, the price point seemed right. It has safety aspects to it. It interfaces with apps and technology or with food and non-food. Um, and she really addressed both rural and urban customers. So I thought that she she really, you know, hit on all of those points. So congratulations to Maddie. Awesome. I guess. Thank you. Congratulations, Maddie. And Linda, thank you again uh -huh. for being here today. Thank we will me. log off uh, for till the top of the hour. So at two o'clock, we'll be back with the next set of pictures for the day. So congratulations to Maddie and Dr. Lee. Thank you for being here. Okay. Thank you.